Uh, yes? Can you very quickly, if it's possible, um, you said kill them where you find Oh my god, you want to know about that one? I've never heard that, so. Uh, so cool. <laughs> so cool. I'll tell you what it's talking about. I will tell you what it's talking about. So, um, anybody ever seen Red Dawn? Yes. Yeah. The old one or the new one? The old and the new. The old and the new? The old one was better. It was. <laughs> the old one was better. I had the craziest experience watching Red Dawn. I'm watching this film. You guys know what I'm talking about or no? How many people don't know? Oh my god, seek forgiveness. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm watching this film. It's a matter of perspective, right? Uh, you, the, uh, the North Koreans are invading the United States and parachutes are landing and they're taking over the, half the country and it's crazy and these poor high school kids are running up into the woods and their ta dad taught them to use a shotgun or something. And they're now considered, guess what? They're considered terrorists. And they're considered insurgents. Outlaws. And I'm like, what a matter of perspective. I'm watching that like, no, they didn't just make that movie. I mean, it's just a matter of who's wearing what flag. <laughs> you, know, you see what I'm saying? Perspective changes everything. Now, the, the thing of it is, in the, uh, in the Islamic tradition, that's a good way to <laughs> In the Islamic tradition, the Prophet, peace be upon him, peacefully started a call to Islam in a city called Mecca at the age of 40. Invited people to this religion, started reciting the revelation that was coming to him. Some people accepted it, most people didn't. People got more and more offended as he continued to recite it. So there were attempts on his life. Then there were attempts on the lives of people who followed his faith. It got to the point where they couldn't live there anymore. So they had to actually secretly escape to another city, leaving behind their businesses, their homes, their families, some, in some cases. Some people were killed, tortured to death, while not fighting back. They make it to another city where they were welcomed. Most people did accept the faith there. A sort of conglomerate government was formed with the, co with the, co uh, the cooperation of Christian and Jewish communities. The Medinan society was formed. And then they started preparing for battle with the city they ran away from. Now, from a political science perspective, they have every right to fight the city that expelled them because who's, what's there? Their homes. They were kicked out of their home for no reason. They were, the, they were the ones that dressed against for no crime that they committed of their own except for believing. Nobody should be oppressed for what they believe, no matter what it is. Now this is a universal thing, it's not just an Islam thing. So they're in every right. If the United Nations was back then, they would be okay with it. They would be okay with it. Now this war starts, and it's going on, and it happens, there are several battles that take place, and eventually, the Muslims win, and how do they win? They actually peacefully march into the city of Mecca with 100,000. 100, They're overwhelmed by the numbers, and they walk in and they don't kill it, they actually pray. And everybody just drops their arms like, there's too many of these guys. And then the Prophet gathers all of the enemies, all the chief enemies that were in battle just years, a year before, two years before, they were out for blood. He gathers all of them and says, I will say to you what Joseph, Joseph said to his brothers, there's no harm coming on you today. Then revelation comes. This is not the prophet talking now, it's revelation talking. Revelation comes and says, these criminals that fought you all this time, give them four months. Give them four months to think about the faith. Take them to a place that's safe so they don't feel intimidated. If they decide that they want to be Muslims, fine. If not, they better not come back and if they do, kill them wherever you find them. But they have how much? Four months. Four months. And in those four months, if you want to leave, go ahead, pack your bags and get out of here. If you want to accept Islam, if you come to that decision yourself, you know what? You're an equal citizen. And if not, you're not, you're not, we're, we don't take prisoners. We're not taking prisoners. But until those four months, you are free to do what you want. This is the specific context of that declaration. It is not a universal Muslim foreign policy. It has actually nothing to do with what will happen after the prophetic tradition because we believe 
that the punishments of God, you know, like the flood of Noah, the flood of Noah, or, you know, earthquake or fire from the sky, or the town sinking into the ground, those kinds of punishments come from God. You know when they come? When a messenger is in the flesh with the people and he's rejected, then God's wrath comes. When a messenger is not there, those kinds of unique punishments don't come on a people where they're annihilated. It's only at the, at the final rejection of a messenger. And by the way, let me add something else. When the flood water, water reaches up to here, up to here, in the case of Noah, right? The only thing above water is the nose now. Does God hit the pause button and say, you learned your lesson now? I'm going to take the water back down. You watch it this time. Does that happen? Does a fire rain from the sky, and right before it hits the guy on the top of the head, stop. You wouldn't joke about that? You wouldn't joke about God's wrath now? You think it's funny now? Does it ever happen? Once it starts, you can't stop. This is a this is God's tradition in previous nations. This is true of the Islamic tradition and the same stories that are mentioned in the Bible. This is what we believe. Now, in the Prophet's case, the punishment was not coming from the sky or a rain or flood or a typhoon. It was the Muslim army that took over the city of Mecca. And the God's tradition fulfilled all criminals who fought against the messenger should be what? Killed. Killed. But the pause button is pressed and told four months. The pause button was never pressed before. It's four months. Think about it. If you want to leave, move to Rome. Go ahead. Move somewhere else. Go ahead. Otherwise, you will face God's wrath which has been coming from previous prophets too. And this is a messenger, and God does not forgive those who violate his messenger's causes. Those who have been ardent criminals. It's up to you. Then a guy came up to the prophet and said, I don't know where you've been. I, I was in my house when you were preaching. I never came outside. I never even know who you were until you just took over Makkah. <laughs> what about me? I mean, he must have had an Xbox at home or something. He did the entire time. He didn't come out. You know, yeah. You mentioned in the first session that there were two perspectives of how to interact. God's and ours. Yeah. So anyway, he says, what about me? I didn't do anything. I didn't fight you guys. You know? And Allah says, what about them? There's a specific verse came about the exceptional case. Listen, I was talking about battle, com com evil, you know, uh, war warring combatants. And I gave them those four months. If one of the other comes, what do you do? If one of, the, one of the idol worshippers comes to you saying, listen, I have no idea. I don't know what this stuff is. Then, leave him be and keep him safe. Ajiru means two things. Leave him be and keep him safe. Until he gets to hear God's word. Then, after he hears God's word, take him to a safe place. That's because they were a people that didn't know. That's because there are people that didn't know. People that didn't know, you are responsible to protect them. Let them know what this is, because they didn't know. But you're also responsible to protect them. Context. Without context, you can pull anything out. Without context, I'm running around after my child, playing with her, and I will say, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm a lion, I'm going to eat you. I say it all the time, you record. Namal Khan told his children that he's going to eat them. <laughs> we have a direct recording, I'm going to eat you. Did you say that, sir? Yes, I did, I actually did say that. <laughs> and they asked my child, were you scared? I was really scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Context, guys. Context. You know? It's so easy to manipulate a text. And the beauty of it is, when I see people manipulating the Quran's text, I find fulfillment of God's word in that. Because he says, He guides with this word many. And he mis lets other people mis be misguided with this word, many of them. And the only one who go in mis into misguidance by using the word are people who are inherently corrupt. Hmm. People that have corrupt intention will use it for misguidance. And uh, when they do that, I say, oh, you told us. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. So I'm not shocked by it. Like uh, we were told.